when you were making albums like The Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, Animals, uh, The Wall, when you are making those albums, did you think, oh, this is everlasting stuff? I don't think you think well about that when you're a kid in your 20s, you know. Longevity in pop music, in, in the terms of me as a 20, whatever I was, 27 year old when we did Dark Side of the Moon, was measured in maybe five, possibly 10 years. When you went in to make Dark Side, did you, did you have it envisioned at all? And, oh, we're going to make this big political, philosophical, you know, what it, what it became. You know, I can't remember the exact point where things changed. I mean, as soon as Roger came in with the idea of its central themes of how the pressures of modern life can affect your sanity, um, it started taking a shape from then on, I would say. And, and what was the, the mood of the band then? Was it, was it a particularly magic time for you guys? I, I can't remember it as being anything out of the normal, you know. Um, it was, we, we were working hard, we were getting on with this stuff, and we were coming up with tunes that we really liked. It, it felt good, but it, 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 that feeling that, that we're onto a real magical something came a bit later down the line, I think. I wanted to ask you if you would just talk a little bit about Nick Mason playing on, on, on Dark Side, because he, all those drum bits are so musical they're so they fit in it's not just someone keeping time this is a whole different kind of thing um you know what can i say nick is the guy who's who's our drummer he's the right guy for the job he we couldn't have wanted anyone different better if you take nick out of the combination it doesn't sound right you know you, we can play comfortably numb with the best drummer in the world and it sounds great but it doesn't sound quite right one other question about Dark Side, the heartbeat. Mm. Did that, was that a finishing touch or was that thought of well in advance? I think that came in quite a while before the end and is done on a tom-tom. It's not a real heartbeat. Right, but I've You'd be in deep trouble if that was your heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> when Pink Floyd puts out special packages, one always feels like they're really special. I mean, there's a lot of attention to detail. For the first time, the concert screen films are being made available. Yeah. I have to tell you, as a fan, I have always wanted to have those concert screen films. Yeah. All this stuff's out on, on, a lot of it anyway, is out on bootleg, but is in such rotten quality that if they're listening to it anyway in shit quality, why not give them it in, in the quality it was originally recorded in. I'm going to be looking through it all myself. So when it some of it I haven't seen. Let's talk for a moment a little bit about Storm Thorgerson. If you could just talk a little bit about him because he's created special booklets and prints and collectible postcards and uh, of course he's been a big big part of the band's history. If you could talk a little bit about him. I've known Storm since I was 13 and he was 15 and he always talked too much. Nothing's changed. <laughs> I had no idea you knew each other that long. Yeah. Um, we used to hang out in a place by the river in Cambridge. When I, when I, I say when I was about 13, he was 15. When I joined the band, he asked me if um, I could persuade them to let him and his other people who were in this, they had a kind of a collective company called Hypnosis. And, uh, you know, he asked me back then in the beginning of 1968 if uh, he could have a crack at the cover for our next album that we were working on, Source Full of Secrets. And uh, I suggested it to the rest of the band and they went along with it. And he's kind of been there ever since. Before we got into the next bit, I, I wondered if you might play just a little bit of Breathe. <laughs> Thank you. 
I wanted to ask you about Richard Wright's contribution mm -hmm. to the dark side of the moon. Well, it's, you know, it's hard to separate Rick's contribution from one album to another. You know, Rick is a vital, important part that adding part of the whole tonality and the whole emotional depth into, into what's going on at, at any given point. And he was certainly in there on that. I mean, he brought in the music for The Great Gig in the Sky, which was a piece that we were going to use on, on the Zabriskie Point film with Antonio a few years before. Rick's contributions throughout the years have tended not to be as noticed as perhaps the, the, the jollity of Roger, Rogers and Mines' arguments <laughs> throughout the years. But Rick's role in it all was very, very important. And even if we as well sometimes um, allowed ourselves to stop noticing how important that was, it, um, it was something that came back can't actually pin down what is and what isn't Pink Floyd by the people who are in it. It's, it's, it's every one of us, every one of the four of us is kind of a vital part of the, of the mix and you're deluding yourself if you think anything other than that. Of course, you can take that on into the moment when Roger had gone and uh, we had to persevere without him um, and you can say something's lost but certainly something was gained as well. Can you tell me a little bit about us and them? How 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 that you know how Richard had that music? How did that how did that come about? It was a piece of piano music um, that was on you know that we had, he must have written before, but we recorded on just a piano for in Rome when we were recording for the Brisky Point thing. Um, I think we used it in that film on a riot scene at. at at uh, West Coast University, at uh, Southern University of Southern California, I guess. Um, and there was a riot scene going on, lots of slow-mo film and police beating students with truncheons. And we thought it, that quiet, beautiful piece worked really well with it, but Antonioni didn't think that the juxtaposition of quiet, beautiful sound with this sort of rather violent action going on was, was, was quite right. He wanted something with a different mood to it. So we, luckily he didn't use it and luckily that left it for us to use on Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs>